Hey guys, and welcome to another Mixer review. If you've clicked on this, you know that we are mixing up uh, Dank One, Aaron Arendt, if I'm saying that correctly. Um, the reason why we picked Aaron um, or Dank One um, was because he's extremely active in the community. I see him contributing quite a bit of content to uh, DIY Down Under. Um, he does not only DIY stuff over there, but also does uh, things with atties like building them and, you know, wire, stuff like that. So, you know, he's really into his vaping and into contributing even on Mixologist, uh, which I've recently invited him. I see him dropping recipes there all the time. So thank you very much, um, Aaron, for doing that. And yeah, he just seems like a really cool guy. So he was on the list and a, an extremely good candidate for the show because of all of his contributions in the community. So um, thank you and welcome to everybody in chat for joining us for another episode. Um, I did ask Aaron to join us. And if he is here, thank you very much. Um, as we run through the recipes, if there's something that we talk about, uh, Aaron, that um, you've got some feedback just posted on that recipe that we're talking about so that we can get the detail, you know, added to what we are saying. But cool, I'll kick off. Um, and the first recipe that I want to talk about is peach keen. Um, so I'll just go into the recipe itself. It's 1.5 FA peach, 0 0.5 cap super sweet, 4% LB vanilla ice cream, 0.5 FLV vanilla pudding. I mean, the first thing that stood out for me in this recipe, of course, this base that was used. Um, this is Fresh O3's custard base. It's, I think it's a shake and vape custard, but custard base. So every time they do a show and, you know, they pick a custard, this is what uh, Fresh reaches out for because um, it's got custard notes there. I mean everything that you want in or that you can get in a shaken vape custard, right? And it's really good. Um, I mean, it's, it's, it's very creamy and it's got some custard notes there from um, the, the ice cream or the vanilla ice cream from LB, which is great. I like this. I've used this before. Um, so the reason why I picked this recipe is because I specifically wanted to moan about the harshness of peach white. You know, I specifically wanted to, to rant about it. Of course, I'm not serious, but um, I have a problem with peaches and, you know, they make my, th they, they scratchy, you know, they, they hurt my throat and, you know, I've just given up. Even commercial juices where you think a lot of tasting has been, you know, gone into the recipes um, to make sure that it's, it's not that harsh. Um, I can't even do those, you know. Um, a lot of, uh, even on this show, on Mixer's, Mixer Review, um, I've mixed up, I think it was, I think it was, um... <laughs> thanks Deets. Uh, I think uh, I think they can see us. We don't have to be upside down. But um, yeah, it's throaty. Uh, it's throaty. Um, so what I did was I wanted to see, this was actually like a little test for me. I wanted to see what 4% um, of LB vanilla ice cream is going to be doing to peach white um, to make it not that throaty. And the outcome was 100% positive, you know. Um, I, was, I was ready to be disappointed by, by this recipe. Um, but, you know, to the contrary, this was, this was a good surprise for me. It's nice and smooth, a nice full mouthfeel with that uh, custard or creamy base from Fresh 03. It's well balanced because I feel that um, I feel that's a trial and tested uh, base right? Creamy base. But the amount of peach white that he added over here um, is just enough to shine. It's added at 1.5%. And then, you know, I think he was uh, aware that this might be harsh any higher. So he kept it at that. 
look, the peach itself is clear as daylight. So it works. And um, there's no funky layering or separation going on here. It's just peaches and cream and it feels blended. You know, it almost, almost feels like some kind, you know, you, you like a smoothie, like a peach and cream kind of smoothie, you know, um, so everything being blended. That's what I'm getting from this. There's not a description in this recipe, so it's up for interpretation. It just says Fresh O3's base plus peach, and that's it. So that's my interpretation here. Um, so he says there, I think um, the suggested steep time here is one day. Um, but, you know, this is pretty much ready for me after a shake. Um, at one day, yeah, things were a lot more blended, but it was pleasant at one day. I mean, just off a shake as well. Um, so I have a serious sweet tooth, right? Um, I do. I, in some of my recipes that are, you know, looking at commercial, you know, some of, uh, you know, commercial elements, I go pretty high. I mean, up to about 1% on super sweet, cap super sweet. This only uses 0 0.5, but for some reason in this recipe with what's used and, you know, this, it's extremely sweet. That's literally nitpicking now because, of course, everybody will adjust the sweetness, um, you know, to their liking. But um, I think 0.3% cap super sweet will be enough for this recipe. Um, I'm sure other people will argue with me on that. Um, but yeah, this was a success for me. Um, I thought I'll be moaning about this peach. This is the first peaches and cream kind of recipe that is not harsh for me, um, that I can babe. So thank you so much, uh, Aaron, for putting that out there. I wouldn't have discovered this if we didn't do this episode. And now, because I love peaches, now I've got a recipe to vape. And now I know it's possible to create something like that. So a uh, tip of me banger for you. There we go. Richard, you did a recipe as well, right? Um. In looking through Aaron's recipes to decide uh, which ones to mix, I, I do, as I do with most mixes, I try and sort of look for a theme. And I did actually find a theme. Um, I chose two fairly high percentage recipes. They're both around the 17, 17 and a half percent mark, which is high for me. Um, you know, it's, it's not that I am biased against high recipes, but it's just, you know, it's unusual for me to, to pick something that high. Um, the other thing that I looked for, he has a couple of recipes that use FA cherry. Uh, now, I bought that flavor, uh, didn't really find much that I could mix with it. So seeing the, these two recipes um, uh, sort of piqued my interest because cherry is, of course, an extremely difficult uh, flavor to get right. And most of the recipes I've seen that use cherry uh, tend to do the old fruit trick of mixing two or three together and trying to fill out, you know, whether one doesn't um, doesn't work, try to fill out with a different cherry. In both these recipes, he just uses plain FA, FA cherry as the only cherry flavor. I mean, he does he does complement it with other flavors in, in, in this particular one. But anyway, let's, let's get down to it. The first one I did is his recipe called Um, which uh, is described as a sort of cherry fruity shake type of... Uh, of thing. Um, let's just look at the at the recipe first. That uh, the top note is is three percent FA cherry, backed up with one and a half percent FA black currant, half a percent of TFA honeysuckle, and half a percent of FA pear. That sits on a sort of milkshakey, creamy base of six percent TFA vanilla bean ice cream and three percent uh, TFA vanilla swirl. And then the one bit that actually made my eyes water when I looked at the recipe was two and a half percent TFA sweetener. I mean, I'm all for mixing up stuff that's kind of outside my envelope, but two and a half percent sweetener is kind of on the far side of Pluto for me. So, but that's okay. I mean, it's, you know, sweetener is a palate dependent thing. So what I do is I dropped it to one percent TFA sweetener. That's really about as high as I'm ever going to go on, on sweetener. So I dropped it down to one percent. And um, 
I was I was very intrigued by this because when I opened the bottle to decant from my mixing bottle into my uh, dropper bottle, I got this very pungent and very pleasant um, cherry flavor that came out of it. So I thought, well, that's a good start. And the vape actually follows through on that. What I'm getting, um, obviously that base, 6% TFA vanilla bean ice cream, 3% TFA vanilla swirl, that's going to give you a solid dab bomb <laughs> of a base that's going to, you know, that's pretty much going to give you all the mouthfeel and texture that you're ever going to need from a vape. So you, you you, you can bang whatever fruit you have on top of that. And you certainly, it's certainly not going to be a thin and, you know, bodiless type of, of vape, which can be a problem with cherry, particularly the Inawera cherries just really doesn't have any body attached to it at all. So that base is fine for that sort of creamy milkshakey type base. But what really pleased me about this is that cherry note. Now he's constructed this carefully. He's got a single cherry as a top note, the FA cherry. He backs that up with FA blackcurrant, which, you know, sort of deepens it a bit. Then he puts in honeysuckle, which was really interesting uh, for me. And then pear, which I suppose just adds a bit of juiciness, a bit of sweetness. But what the result is a very deep, sweet, pronounced cherry top note. It's a very interesting and a very complex cherry top note. And it does register as cherry. That black currant and the honeysuckle and the pear don't pull it into some kind of cherry fruit blend it, it does for me register quite prominently as cherry and it's a good cherry and it's an interesting cherry uh, it's sweet i get sugar lips from it that one percent tfa sweetener is fine so if you're mixing uh, this up don't feel that you have to go for the for the two and a half percent sweetener i mean if you if you love sweet juices by all means go for it but just to let you know that one percent tfa sweetener was more than enough for me the the pair vanishes as you would expect. Uh, Zero point five percent FA pair isn't really going to show up prominently in in any recipe. The black currant and the honeysuckle are both there if you look for it. If you look for them, you find those notes in there. <clears throat> but if you don't look for them, and you just vape it for what it is, it comes across as a cherry note. Um, so in in that sense, I really like that. I like mixes where you know, if you think, if you know it's in there and you look carefully, you can find it. But when you just vape it for what it is without going too deeply into it, you know, you're looking at the whole. You're not looking at the, at the, at the sum of the parts or even at the parts on their own. Um, I'm not getting much egginess or butteriness from the from the vanilla bean ice cream which was surprising at six percent that vanilla is there but it, you know it's such a, a mild sort of supporting flavor that it, it boils up that cherry very nicely so what i'm getting is a deep but a candied top cherry note with a very rich and and filling sort of cream underneath it the cherry doesn't go into medicinal or cough drop territory it's not the sort of thing that concrete river is going to describe as a dumpster fire or hot garbage it's it's actually, it's not a totally authentic cherry, but it is for me a very pleasing cherry and the whole thing hangs together uh, very nicely. So it was actually a, a good surprise uh, for me. So for his boldness in going for a, essentially a cherry shake, for only using one cherry in it and for concocting that blend of the fruits that make, makes that cherry work so well, uh, I'm going to give him a fist pump and a tip of the banger. And with me. Hey, um, just before we go to the next person, I forgot to add something here. Uh, learned this from uh, Dietz, you know, last week. But I'm going to be adding something here. Uh, and, and I think that's a trend. Um, so, you know, it almost where we think that we need to combine fruits to create the ultimate fruit, you know, what I'm seeing here as well with what happened with Richard on my side, it feels like, you know, he just used white peach. You know, if you know white peach is quite a thin peach. Um, it's, it's not, it doesn't have much body to it. You know, it's throaty as well. Um, but he backed it up with um, Albi vanilla and of course, uh, FLV uh, vanilla pudding. And that somehow, you know, there's creaminess there, but that somehow feels like the body of the peach, you know? So um, 
it, it ultimately becomes the peach, which makes the experience uh, like a fuller peach experience uh, on my side. Sorry about that, but I forgot to add that in. Daniel, you next, right? Yeah, so I also mixed up peach keen, um, which you've pretty much covered most of my notes. Um, I also find most peaches pretty harsh, uh, where um, he used 4% uh, LB vanilla ice cream, which helps bring that harshness down quite a bit. So I don't get the harshness in this recipe, but generally if a white peach is harsh on its own, so if it's in a fruit mix, it's there, it chops my throat up um, and it gets pretty harsh. It's, it's like a really bad tobacco, like that I'm not really enjoying and I'm coughing. But with this recipe, um, I, I, I thoroughly enjoy it. I think vanilla ice cream is one of the best um, creams to use with a peach. Um, because it's it's so bold, but uh, like you said, it also completes the body of the of the peach. Um, and I mean, to be honest, there's not much I can say more than what you've said because you covered most of the notes that I covered. But um, in terms of harshness, I don't get that in this one. So it's a pretty good uh, peach recipe that that I can vape like as an all day vape. So for me, um, I know this is short, but it's just a tip of the banger and a fist bump because I, I dig peach vapes that don't cut my throat up. Okay, so I mixed up <clears throat> Maker's Mead. And in his Maker's Mead, his description is a simple, a simple yet tasty honey bourbon vanilla mead brought to you by the Vikings of days long past. With this, he has 2.25% FLV milk and honey, 1.25 TFA vanilla bourbon, and this comes out to a 3.5% total recipe percentage. He recommends a, a one day steep and it is also marked as a shake and vape. Now this one for me, the, the, the flavor is quite interesting. I get, I get like a dark honey, a dark honey milk with some vanilla rounding it off in the end. Um, in terms of the flavor, it has something like, if I can put it to a, you get this chocolate liqueur or liqueur chocolate. It's a chocolate that's filled with some alcohol liqueur. Now this, the flavor kind of leans towards that, that, that filling, that liqueur filling in a chocolate on the smell and a little bit on the inhale. Um, I also think this one can do with a little bit of sweetener and possibly something to, to kind of fluff up the texture. Because in terms of the texture of the profile, there's not really too much going on for me. Um, I feel that the, the, the vanilla bourbon almost leaves a little bit of a, a dryness that can, can be translated into a bit of a harshness, but it's more dry. So for that reason, I think it would, be, would work well to add, to add something in for texture, maybe like a marshmallow or, or something, just to soften it up a bit and bring that, that smoothness into, into the mix. With that said, this, this, this recipe can also go well with, with something like a custard. If you use this as a flavor base and you add a custard or maybe a yellow cake or, or something like that, where you've got something additional or even a milk or ice cream, this, this actually would go very well for me with, with a ice cream, just a plain vanilla ice cream, complementing the vanilla bourbon, but yet um, keeping all the flavors together. So that was just my feeling on, on, on the maker's meat. What did you mix, Liam? <laughs> well, I mixed up uh, Mars, Mars in a pan which is a dessert style tobacco vape that's the only thing that he's actually got in the notes the recipe is 0.5% Capella Butter Pecan 0.66% FA Marzipan 5% TFA RY4 Double 2.75% Capella Sugar, cooker, uh, sugar Cookie now, he recommends a three-day steep on this one. Um, I tried it at three days, and I felt like it, it needed a little bit more. So I put it in the cupboard and then uh, forgot about it for a couple of days. So uh, my notes are based on a, an eight-day steep. I thought this was a very... Um, I thought this was a very nice idea to actually combine those flavors together. It's actually a... It's quite a nice dessert tobacco vape. Uh, the TFA uh, Y4 double is uh, a very dominant flavor. And you know it's in there. 
Um, I then get this followed by the F.A. Marzaban, the almond, the almond-like uh, sweetness comes through just after the RY4. And it's a decent combination because it actually gives you a little bit more sweetness to that uh, RY4 double. Um, I'm not actually getting anything from the butter pecan, but I think at half a percentage it's actually um, enhancing that F.A. Marzaban slightly, just giving it a little bit more of a, um, a little bit more of a nut note and sl a very slight butter. Now the sugar cookie actually comes through right at the end of the vape, which quite surprised me. At 2.75%, I was expecting that to be a bit more of a dominant flavour. For my palate, I think what's happened what's happened is the RY4 double is actually it's either a little bit too strong at five percent, or in my mind, it's a bit of a um, bit of a strong and dirty RY4 to actually be used with the flavours he's combined it with. So, if I was to mix this myself, I'd actually uh, look at using the DIY FS Holy 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 Grail RY4 or uh, possibly um, the FARY4 with a little bit of Soho, just because they're slightly lighter on the tobacco notes than the uh, than the RY4. All in all, I, I did actually enjoy it. Um, I'm quite happy to give it a three and a half out of five. And Theo, what did you mix up next? Yeah, so, um... You know, last year I went on a bit of a cheesecake rampage and um, that's where we found um, or where I found one of my favorite cheesecakes, which is Dayberry Cheesecake from Alfred Pudding. Um, just the, the the trio cheesecake base that he uses in there is, is really yummy. Um, so I found this recipe, which is Cheesy Blue Double Trilogy. Right, uh, Richard, you need to help me out here. Um, the the blueberry, which is uh, if a bullberry, um, uh, two percent uh, if W blueberry and three percent TFA blueberry extra. Who created that blueberry base? Edible mal malfunction. Edible mal malfunction. Okay, cool. Okay, yeah. yeah. I was I was looking for that. I know you mentioned it before, but thank you. So he took Edibles um, blueberry base, and he took um, Alfred Pudding's cheesecake base and put those together, right? Um, so the cheesecake base here, of course, I'll just mention it again, is 1% TFA cheesecake gram crust, uh, 2% cap New York cheesecake, and... Um, 3% Inuera Yes We Cheesecake. So that's a 3, 2, 1. Uh, is that... Yeah, a three, two, one cheesecake base, actually. Um, so anybody can use that and put their favorite fruit on top of that. It will be delicious, okay? Um, but what I see he did over here, he also added 0.75% uh, vanilla swirl. And we'll get into that. We'll get into what I think that is. Maybe, Aaron, you can tell us what that is. Okay, so... I'm not going to go much into the notes and stuff that I get from the, the cheesecake base. It's just a beautiful, delicious baked cheesecake. You know, um, I like it. And there's a little bit of crust notes. And of course, the, the Cap New York Cheesecakes helps darken that um, cheesecake a little bit. And it's delicious. Okay. Um, the blueberry base, it's, I'm, I'm new to, you know, vaping blueberry. Um, it, Blueberries are a little bit weird, but this trio here seems to work really well. Um, I've, I've tested this trio in another recipe as well before on the show, and I like it. I think it's a jammy uh, blueberry topping. The, the picture as well on this recipe gives you that idea that you've got, you've got a cheesecake, um, and then on top you've got this jammy blueberry uh, jam on top of it, right? That's that's what I'm all syrupy stuff on top of it, you know. So that's the kind of idea I have. There's not much in the description for the recipe, so I guess it's really open to interpretation. Um, this one, yeah, it's it's pretty sweet. It's very smooth. It's delicious. I think um, the vanilla swirl was used in here to bridge um, the cheesecake with the blueberry. That's what I think the, the vanilla swirl is doing. But 
um, if you know if if you're giving the idea of the picture that there is a jammy sort of blueberry on top of a cheesecake, then potentially you want that separation. You want to experience that separation. For me, this recipe is delicious. However, it feels like the blueberry is part of the cheesecake. So the mixture of the actual cheesecake has some blueness to it, right? Some blueberry blueness to it. And the, the blueberry stuff doesn't sit on top. That's, that's really all I'm getting. Um, from this recipe here. It is delicious. I'm going to be finishing the sample up. I'm also going to be trying this recipe without the vanilla swirl um, and maybe look for an alternative. We spoke about uh, if a almond, you know, early in the week that can help with that separation. Maybe a small little bit of that will separate these two bases and then give you a two layer experience. Um, I have to try that out. I, I don't know if that has any ground, but I'll definitely feed back my information. Yeah, I can't really fault this recipe. These two elements are trial and tested and very popular. So yeah, I'm going to just give a fist pump there. Boom, for, for putting that out there. If you want a delicious blueberry cheesecake, here you go. Um, I mean, I'm nitpicking if I'm saying, hey, I want two layers <laughs> because, you know, ultimately this vapes well, it's smooth. It's delicious. The sweetness, yes, the sweetness. Um, it's it's pretty sweet, man. It's um, he's got one percent uh, TFA sweetener in here. I didn't use TFA sweetener. I don't really like that too much. Um, but uh, I sub that for about zero point five super sweet. The sweetness that I'm getting, um, it's pretty sweet. So I don't know if that was. Maybe just my mistake by adding a little bit too much cap in there, potentially, right? Could have been. But thank you very much. Uh, Richard, what did you mix up? Right. This, the second part of my high percentage cherry journey, courtesy of Aaron, was his Xmas V1 mix, which he describes as a cherry custard. I think what he meant was a cherry custard, but cherry it is. Um, Let's just go through the recipe and you can see that this is quite a bold uh, recipe. Um, as his top note, he just has 3.5% FA cherry. Nothing else to, to bolster that top note. His custard base, 2.25% cap vanilla custard, 4.5% vanilla bean ice cream, 1.5% TFA vanilla swirl, 2% TFA malted milk, 3.5% TFA white chocolate, and 0.5% cap super sweet. Now that is an adapt bomb. That is a adapt cluster bomb. I mean, you're going to be drowning in mouthfeel and and density and texture and so on from that, which is is fine. That's that's a custard. I like it to be nice and, and thick. But what I like about this recipe, or what I like about the idea of this recipe, is that I generally find custards, um, and particularly cap vanilla custard, to be a bit kind of oily and dull. Um, what I like about adding cherry to it is that cherry has a kind of natural sharpness. If you think of that that uh, sweet but still sharpness that you get from a maraschino cherry, it just it makes sense to me that that would cut a little bit through that that sort of dull oiliness of the um, of the custard, and would add some uh, interest into the into the custard flavour. Um, this is a 17.75% uh, total flavor recipe, so again, again, fairly high. Uh, it uses a fairly similar base to the the previous one, the um uh, recipe, and that it's it's got that vanilla bean ice cream, again the vanilla swirl, again. But what he's done is drop the percentages on those a little bit and added the vanilla custard and the white chocolate, and the malted milk at a surprisingly high two percent. Now I've never mixed. Any recipe with malted milk as high as two percent, and I've the the notes I've read on it is that it can tend to get a little bit chalky and chemical uh, up that high. So I was I was cognizant of that while I was mixing it. But um, on the on the taste on the first taste, it kind of came out the way that I expected it. That that custard base is good. I'm detecting a 
teeny little bit of, of chalkiness, which probably is from the malted milk, but it, it's covered up enough. You know, if, if I didn't know that there was 2% TFA malted milk in there, I, you know, it wouldn't probably have registered. It was because, again, I was looking specifically for it that I, I noticed it. But certainly nothing wrong with that base. It's, it's dappy, it's thick, it's, it's heavy. I mean, that 3.5% that TFA white chocolate fills it out, out quite a bit. As you would expect, you know, he's pushed the cherry up to 3.5%, which is probably about as high as you can go with, uh, with FA cherry. Um, and it's asking a lot for a single unsupported cherry flavor to cut through all those base notes that are underneath that combination of white chocolate, swirl, custard, Vbic, malted milk. And as I expected, it doesn't it doesn't punch through it. Instead, what you get is a custard with a blush of like a maraschino cherry uh, note in it. Uh, but I like that. Um, it's, it's rich. Uh, the cherry is definitely not as deep as it is in the, in the previous recipe in the um. um. But for me, it hangs together fairly well. The cherry is still, uh, you know, obviously it's not an authentic cherry, but it's still doing the job that it's, that it's meant to do in this recipe. It's still not um, evolving into cough mixture or, uh, you know, that sort of medicinal taste that, that, that cherries are, are noted for. So what you're getting is basically a nice rich custard, but with just a little blush of cherry in, just to add some interest, just to cut that oiliness a bit. And from that sense, it works. Where I feel the recipe maybe could have gone further was if he'd taken those ideas from the, the, um, from the, uh, the fruit shake that I, I reviewed earlier and had built out that cherry a little bit. Maybe get it to punch a little bit harder, maybe deepen the profile of that cherry a bit, make it a little bit more interesting, make it a little bit more of a vertical, uh, you know, a deeper, more complex cherry. It, it works in this, but I think there's potential there, you know, just to push that, that cherry a little bit further. Um, so overall, successful recipe. I'll, I'll vape this very happily. I don't get cough drops from it. I don't get medicine from it. I quite like custards. Cherry is a good complement to a custard. So it's definitely something I, I, I'll mix again. But I might just incorporate some of those supporting flavors that he used in the um shake uh, just to build up that cherry a bit, see if I can get a little bit more of a complex cherry uh, sitting on top of that or blended into that, uh, that super rich uh, custard below. But overall, for the two recipes, um, he's given me you know, perfectly viable use. For FA cherry, it's a flavor that I, I didn't find many other recipes for. Um, so for that alone, you know, another fist pump for that. Daniel, what did you what did you mix up? All right, so <clears throat> I mixed up um, Master Shake, which also um, doesn't have any description of what it is, but he made this in honor of the great Master Shake from a show called Aqua Teen Hunger Force. I've not seen the show. But um, from, from what I taste and from what I can see is it's a white chocolate, strawberry, and vanilla um, milkshake. Um, so I think I'll start with the, the concentrates. So you used a creamy milk undertone VG, 2.75%. Uh, uh, frozen yogurt SC at 2%. Shisha strawberry, in a way, she's strawberry at 1.5%. Uh, shisha vanilla, also in a way, at 1.25%. Then you use cap super sweet at 0.5%. Cap sweet strawberry at 0.5%, uh, vanilla pudding at 1%, and TFA white chocolate at 4.5%. So um, I think starting off, it's not very, um, like, nothing sits on top of each other. It's quite um, neutral. So I get a vanilla, a strawberry, and a white chocolate sitting almost on the same level, um, like they were uh, mixed with syrups. So sort of like a vanilla syrup, a um, bit of a strawberry syrup, a bit of white chocolate syrup, mixed in with a, v a vanilla soft serve um, ice cream. What I've found interesting is that he used um, like creamy milky undertone and frozen yogurt for that um, milk base, uh, which is interesting because frozen yogurts are very like, um, it's not very yogurty. It's, its name is not at all what it, what it says. It's, it's a very um, like, uh, not 
too creamy, but creamy, um, like shake sort of vibe, almost like vanilla swirl. Um, but what, what I, what I liked is the white chocolate brings a certain dairy note to the milkshake. Um, it's not something I've seen often. Um, it, it makes me think about some milkshakes that I've done where if I can just put maybe 1% or 2% of white chocolate, I'll get a very good um, dairy note versus trying to fill that out with something like, um, meringue or, uh, uh, or cream fresh, for instance, I'll, I'll, I can use white chocolate to create that, that same milky vibe. Um, to it, and then shisha vanilla at one point two five percent is is pushed quite high with the with vanilla pudding just to bring out the vanilla notes. Because um, <clears throat> the one thing I notice is because there's a lot of flavors, they generally overrun each other. So you're not going to get um, like well, usually with something like shisha strawberry, I won't get a lot of vanilla notes with it because shisha strawberry is quite potent at one point five percent for me. Um, so. In, in terms of this recipe, it's very well balanced. Um, I can vape this pretty much all day. And I, I like the application of frozen yogurt versus using something like vanilla swirl. Uh, it's not often that I see people using frozen yogurt, uh, Wonder Flavors frozen yogurt, you know. Um, and then shisha vanilla, you know, it, it, it's really good with um, vanilla pudding. Um, it brings quite a, a nice aspect to it. It's not the usual vanilla that I expect from a milkshake where usually people would run to something like a TFA vanilla ice cream or vanilla swirl for their milkshake base. Um, shisha vanilla and vanilla pudding is, is, is pretty good for that vanilla base in, in terms of matching with shisha strawberry um, and TFA white chocolate. So, so TFA white chocolate is the only one that's, that's not too prominent. Um, I never found white chocolate to be very prominent in the first place. Um, none of them are filled out because it's missing a lot of that fat. It's a lot more of like a white chocolate essence if you will, or it's like pieces of white chocolate mixed in or blended in with that ice cream. But um, for me, this is like a, a five-star recipe. Um, I can vape this uh, for a very long time still before I get tired of it. So it doesn't get a tip. It gets a full banger from me for this recipe. All right. Deets. Okay. <clears throat> so for my next one, I did Fuji 1.0. 1.0. His description is: This is an apple a apple juice vape. It's the Ferrari of the apple universe. So it has two percent Inuera cactus. <coughs> Excuse me. Two percent Inuera cactus. Four percent FA Fuji. One percent TPA marshmallow and zero point three three percent super sweet, which I found a bit weird, but. The first, my first thoughts were that it's going to be um, overbearingly cactus because I have kind of reached my cactus limit recently, but I still enjoy it in mixes as, a, as an additive. <clears throat> but I was pleasantly surprised after the first few puffs. Um, I definitely get more of a, a apple, a candy apple than a cactus, but it's, it's, it's blended very well with, with the Fuji. So in my, my opinion, the, there's there's a few things that that mix very well with cactus, um, Fuji apple being one of them. But in the way that he's made this recipe, they blend together very well. Um, it is a bit of a strange one, <clears throat> but not as strange as you would normally expect cactus to be. With the Fuji at four percent, it kind of um, it changes the cactus out a little bit. If I can explain it in 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 terms of if you took a nice ripe sweet red apple and a cactus and you modified them and grew one weird little GM apple that tastes a little bit like the flavor of a cactus but still apple, then this would be it dipped in hard candy, like a candy apple. So um, it's, it's, it's apple, Fuji apple forward, definitely on the inhale and throughout the vape, but you do get the cactus blended on the exhale. I feel that the cactus is a bit more um, prominent in the first first few days of straight off the shake and vape, where the can uh, the, the the cactus is a bit loose with with regards to how it blends with the the Fuji apple. Uh, after the the second or third day, I would say by about day three, the cactus and Fuji blends together better and becomes a little bit more of a soft soft kind of mouthfeel, leaving both a bit blended. And with regards to the 0.33% super sweet, it's a bit strange that it's in there so low, but the recipe does 
have a, a very sweet tinge to it, especially on the shaken vibe. I think the combination of the super sweet with the cactus, and this is only on the shaken vibe, it kind of gives a little bit of a, a aftertaste of um, artificial sugar, like a sweetener you would add to your to your coffee if you if you are not drinking sugar. But that definitely blends away after about day three or so. Then that that off that artificial sugar taste blends blends away. I would guess it's from the um, the marshmallow that then thickens up a little bit to bring out that profile. I would say this is a good recipe for people who um, new people who would like to to work with Fuji apple and cactus and marshmallow at the same time, just to give you them a, a very good idea of how these three concentrates work separately as well as blending together with other flavors, specifically the the Fuji and the cactus. In this recipe, they blend together very well. And um, you get a lot of what's going on with both of them at the same time. So all in all, it's a good vibe and I enjoyed it. Thank you. I would give this one a fist bump. Uh, Liam, what did you I, mix? I, <laughs> thanks, Steve. <Pete. laughs> for uh, my next recipe, I mix, mixed up uh, peachy snatch. Which, um, when I was looking through his recipes, trying to decide what I wanted to mix up, First off, I wanted to find one that I actually had the concentrates for. <laughs> and then um, I have a look for ones that are actually, um, actually piqued my interest. And this one got me. So I thought, right, I'm going to mix this one up. The recipe is 2.5% in a wearer biscuit, 0.75% uh, Capella buttercream, 1.5% Capella cinnamon Danish swirl, 2.75% FA white peach and 1% super sweet. He recommends a seven day steep, but does actually say in his notes it is shaken vapable, but he actually recommends that you give her a little bit of a breathe because he feels that there's some alcohol within the uh, white peach. Now, I steeped it for seven days. Uh, didn't, actually vet, uh, didn't actually breathe it because I don't normally breathe any of my juices. Now, the reason why I mixed it up is I have never used FA white peach that high. And I was expecting it to be perhaps slightly harsh, but I didn't get any harsh nuts whatsoever from this. Um, what I did get is uh, the biscuit coming through, uh, sort of as a main taste, but then it's been manipulated slightly by adding the cinnamon Danish swirl. So you actually get, it's not a full-on pie crust, but you do get a nice flaky uh, crust. Um, it's, not quite, it's not quite a Danish crust, and it's not quite a pie crust. It's somewhere in between. And then I then get the, uh, the, the white peach actually coming through, and the white peach comes through nice and strong. Not too strong, but enough to make, uh, enough to let you know that it's actually in there. Then, what he's done with the uh, Capella buttercream, that seems to actually smooth that peach out. It smooths the whole mix. So, it, it's actually taken off some of the edges that some might get from white peach. And it's actually made it a really nice, smooth vape with uh, the peach being nice and juicy. And uh, the cinnamon from the cinnamon Danish swirl is actually not very prominent. It is there, but what it seems to do is um, adds like a baked feeling to the uh, to the peach. Now I'm not sure whether that's just uh, me associating cinnamon and fruits with a baked, but. I do also get a slightly syrupy peach from it as well. And it's, uh, it's actually done really well. And with the buttercream, the buttercream actually gives a little bit more sweetness to this. And then uh, moistens up the mouthfeel, so it's not an overly dry vape. I'm not sure whether that uh, buttercream actually adds a very slight butteriness as well to the peach, which is why I'm getting more like. Um, more like a fruit syrup as opposed to chopped up peaches. Now, 
with the sweetener, I don't normally use sweetener in any of my recipes. I normally find them sweet enough. But because he had uh, the 1% sweetener on there, I thought I'd actually mix it up with the sweetener. And for me, it wasn't overly sweet. It actually worked with the profile because when you're, when you're going to have a bakery, like a, a peach pie, you'd expect it to have that sweetness there. And that's what the, uh, that's what the super sweet has done for me. It's actually given the sweetness as if I'd actually uh, put some sugar, sprinkle some sugar onto the top of the bakery. Uh, I wouldn't push it any higher than 1%. But it, and again, if you don't like sweetener, then you could potentially leave it off. But as I said, I, I do think it actually adds to this profile. Now, for the top notes, I'm actually getting that full-on pastry. Then the peach, the syrupy peach, actually fills in the middle notes with the buttercream then coming through slightly at, at the end. And I be very happy. I'm, I've actually been vaping this constantly since I cracked it open and I'm not getting tired of it or anything. I happily vape this all day, every day. So for me, this recipe is a full on banger. Theo? Yeah, he has a way with the peaches, it seems, dude, because um, I've just been like in the show, I've just been going back to this the whole time. You know, I've got a, a bunch of things here. Um, and I've just been reaching for it the whole time. It's just so delicious, this peach keen. So he obviously, he's, he, he knows how to, to work that white peach, man. <laughs> Him and the white peach are like, you know, they understand Definitely. each other. Yeah. So cool, man. This, is, um, this, is, this has been a success. Uh, I didn't expect so many, um, you know, tip of bangers, two full bangers, Tons of fist pumps, you know what I mean, everywhere, which is always good. Um, Dank one, Arendt, thank you so much. Um, I'll leave a link below. Everybody go and check out his mixes. Um, he's got a ton of mixes. This is one thing we didn't speak about. He's got a, quite a big profile full of mixes, um, you know, in there. And there's not a lot of reviews. So for the ones that, that I've got a tip of the banger or or whatever the case is i'll definitely go and put that review down there um guys if you can do it as well and and in people in chat if if you are going to be mixing up any of dank's uh, one's recipes please go and put down that review but i just want to thank him so much for all the work he puts into the community and also the mixes he put out here because yeah this uh, peach keen for me has has solved my peach um <laughs> misery mystery whatever you want to call it so thank you very much uh, just one more thing that i want to add to the show um so um we'll just go around the room and we will talk about where we can find um where they can reach us you know if they if they want to of course you can leave a comment below um and then eventually uh you know we'll get to you but um, if you want to find me, um, you, you have to join uh, the Mixologist Facebook group. You'll find me there. Um, yeah, Richard is there as well. Dietz is there. Um, Daniel is there. Liam is there as well. So go and join that group. Um, on all the flavors, you can look under the Fog Vlog. Those are my specific mixes. Um, you, can, you can go and check those out. I've got a couple out. And that's pretty much, yeah, the places that, that you can find my details. Uh, Richard? Uh, basically on the Mixologists uh, group. I'm, I'm not active on um, ATF or ELR. I'm on E6SA, of course. Um, but probably the Mixologist group would be, would be the easiest place to, to find me. Daniel. Yeah, so um, I you, you can find me on the Vaping Mixologist group. That's probably the, the best place to contact me. I'm also on E6SA and um, the DIY or Die Mixes Collective and the Coil group. I'm on those three, but um, if, if you're in one of those, you want to hit me up, you can just send me a message. I am in those ones and I'm quite active commenting on posts. Um, and then my ATF is uh, Dr. Store. Um, 
that's that's my ATF handle. You can send messages on there too if you want to. Um, that's probably the the best place to to find my recipes. And if you want to chat on notes, then Facebook's probably the best place to go because I'm quite a, um, contactable there. And Dietz? I am also on the Mixologist group. I think if you want to have a chat there or ask a question or something, that would be easiest. Mixologist, I'll be under there. And then I'm also on ATF, D double E T double Z, Dietz, with two Zs in the end. Yep, that's me, Liam. Uh, you can find me on the Mixologists group as well. I'm also on uh, Vaping Home Mixes and the Chef's Flavors Facebook group and DIY Down Under and plenty of others. I get myself up there. Um, uh, my ELR profile is Sheerluck underscore Ohms. And that's where you will find all my recipes and some of my single flavor notes. You can also find a lot more of my single flavor notes uh, within the mentioned Facebook groups and also on ELR under the Vaping Scribe. Theo? Cool, man. Yeah, that's pretty much it, guys. Um, you'll find in the description, if you want to support us, you'll find a collaboration uh, one-shot line there. So, yeah. Please go and check that out on the BLCK store. But furthermore, thank you so much for joining us in chat. Always nice to have you guys here. Um, and as I said, Dank, thank you much for those recipes. Cheers, guys. That's pretty much it. Thank you. See you next week. Thanks, guys. Thanks, Joel. Bye, Thank guys. You.